sponsors, and this is what we call the parade of sponsors here on the Gatorade Challenge Night. And this is the chance for the drivers to kind of salute some of the sponsors, big or small, that they have on the side of these flying billboards. Archie Griffin will lead it out of that B&D, the Big Daddy's Restaurant in Hardy's of Southwest Missouri. Number 11, Grand American Late Model carrying the Gatorade flag. The three-time national champion of that fourth one pickup covers number 75, Carl Larry Sullivan. Paul Rowan, the old Sullivan Furniture sponsored number 13, Grand American Late Model. John O'Neill in that O'Neill sheet metal, number 26, Late Model out of Springfield. Carl Lawrence is number 92, the Country Kitchen, Chevrolet Lumina, currently second in the Late Model stop. That's the team car. He will have to run this one in the first feature in the, uh, the Country Kitchen number 93 car. Don Scrum, the Don Painting number 03 from the Bomb Squad Division. Leonard Brian Brown in that Sonic sponsored number 2 car out of 11 of Missouri. Steve Shaw out of Rogersville, the A1 Lawn Service number 19 car. And back with us in the Jack Warren truck, the, the Speedway champion, Sergeant Charlie Johnson, car number 1. The Adventure Time video station number two bomber of Terry Holt Camp and the Weber Excavating number 12 car Rick Oliver from Rolla, Missouri. Larry Pruitt with the Century 21 real estate sponsored on the 02 machine. And of course with the Benson Welding number 11 car, there's your point leader, Frankie Weiss out of Newburgh. Also with the Benson Welding number 23 bomber out of Rolla, that's Mike Benson and Gary Foster. Been on a roll lately in that wing installation sponsored number 15 car. Mike Benson in the McMullen Racing number 28 car. and. W's place number 41 car of George Huey Jr. Teresa Holiday in that Holiday Racing number 18 car out of Conway, Missouri. And the Bills Refrigeration sponsored number three late model stock car, Randy Nutter. The Perry's Antiques number 41 car, rookie driver Chris Perry out of Springfield. And Willie Thompson in that poor boy's garage number 04 car from down in the Waynesville, Missouri area. And this is a chance for the cars in all the classes, it looks like. A chance to display the colors of the cars and sponsors as Richie Stewart, Bruce Hanley will be heading them down here on the front stretch and Bob, real nice little ceremonies. Of course, this is the Gatorade Challenge Night. It is, Ronnie, in the heat of the driver's whole body gets thirsty. Your body gets thirsty from heat and exercise, too, and because you lose more than just water, you lose vital minerals, elements that help your body work. Gatorade Thirst Quencher is scientifically formulated to help replace the fluids and minerals you lose when you exercise. That's why Gatorade is the official sports beverage of NASCAR, and along with Gatorade's support of Gatorade Nights and many NASCAR Winston Racing Series tracks, they also sponsor the exclusive Gatorade Circle of Champions program, recognizing and rewarding the winners and champions in every NASCAR division, from the Winston Racing Series to the Winston Cup Series, drivers, fans, officials, and just about everyone alike depends on Gatorade. <laughs> And, of course, the Gatorade Challenge Races will be the second half of our program here this evening, Bob, as we're going to conclude the features that we had. You can go by the wild side, Larry. That's all right. We will conclude the late model stock, the late model, and the bomb squad features. We're going to take a brief intermission then, and that will give the drivers a chance to kind of get set up and around just a little bit. And as some of the drivers, hey, there we go. Mike's going to go by the wild side. We're going to salute you guys over there, too, the Raleigh Gang, Teresa Holiday, and that. Well, this is a chance for the drivers, as we said, to show them off just a little bit. Some of the crew members get a chance, and you kind of see some of the cars and stars of the I-44 Speedway and all the classes. And ladies and gentlemen, as they get out, what do you say we give a big round of applause for tonight's participants in our parade of sponsors? I'd like to present a special guest with us here this evening. This is Marty Johnson from down in Miller, Missouri, and Marty said she'd like to speak a few words, and Marty, I want to turn the microphone over to you. Kindness and caring come in many forms. Words of encouragement, food, flowers, contributions, cards, a trip to our home, offers to help, pictures, newspaper articles, attendance at a funeral, a hug, a gentle touch, a smile or a tear, and prayers. Never has our family seen such an outpouring of love and caring. We are overwhelmed. You have given us a priceless gift to help us in our sorrow. May the Christ of Calvary fill each of your hearts and bless your life from our hearts to your heart. Thank you.
You have done Ramey proud. That's from Ramey's family and our crew. Thanks. That deserves a standing ovation, yes. We want to thank you for giving us Ramey in the short time that we got to know him very much. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if you would please remain standing as Mr. Frank Stark from Raceway Ministries will give us the invocation. Please remain standing for our national anthem. Let us bow our heads as we go to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious and all wise and loving Heavenly Father, as we bow in your presence tonight, we want to thank you for the blessing that you've given us today. We come asking for safety for everyone involved in tonight's activities. Father, we thank you for your love for us in the good days as well as in the difficult times. Thank you for loving us uh, even when we are not very lovable. Thank you, our Father, for the fans that we have, for the track, for the officials who work so hard to put all this together. Thank you for our sponsors. Thank you for your love for us. And our Father, we thank you for this great country in which we live and help us that we might do our part in making our nation one nation under God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hey, Sergeant Charlie Johnson, good to see you back. Gatorade night. Are you ready to take the Gatorade challenge? You bet I am. Race fans, racer, let's go racing. What do you say, Grandstand? Are you ready to go race time? And we're going to lead them around for a couple of pace laps with that Lake Lead Auto Sales pace car. And you'll see three laps go down on the Ozark Coca-Cola school board. And there is your leader, the racing reverend Jack Daniel in car number one. Chris Perry holding on to the number two spot in that 41 car. Tim Jackson in car number 65. Mark Chance was also up there. He was running third. Jim Hayes in car number 34. Randy Besser in car number 24 car. The 93 car. Last week it was 17. Bill Gillum sold this car to Carl Lawrence. Carl trying to stay up in the thick of the point battle. And this is the car that Carl was racing last week. And the 06 car, that's your track point leader. Normally 57, Larry Roberts. But tonight he will be in the 06 car for this first feature in the late model stock. And Bob will get him singled out here as everybody now getting their way up into their starting grid position. And Ronnie, I tell you what, it's a very intriguing story which resulted last week. Carl Lawrence had problems with the 92 machine, took Dave Anderson's car number four out, was involved in a serious accident, was taken to the hospital, and as he came back and headed back to the staging area, or rather down to the pits, the modifies were wrapping up their feature. Late model stocks were already in the staging area. He had talked to his crew, gotten a hold of Bill Gillum, and actually purchased a 17 car of the two-time Speedway champion. He hit the track in that machine and completed the three laps. Then the rains came. During the week, he and his crew have gotten together and gotten that car painted. So that 93 car you see out on the track right now was a 17 car from last week. Because once you start a feature, Ronnie, once you come out for that first parade lap, that's the car you have to use. And this is not the extra money. This is not part of the Gatorade Challenge. As our Chief Stewart Bruce Haley will take that beautiful Leckley's all sales base car back toward up. We lost the flag. We got another one. Hang on. I forgot to put the rubber band on it, guys. Sorry. Jack Daniel is your pace setter in that number one car from down in Graboy's Mill. Chris Perry running in second and this ought to be interesting. Mark Chance is third. Fourth is Tim Jackson. Fifth is Jim Hayes. Last night's feature winner is the Gatorade Challenge up at Speedway USA and Bolivar. Sam Payne holds on the six. Randy Besser, who was in the top five last night, a great run for the driver out of Branson in 24. The general giant, J.C. Newell, right behind him in 84. Paul Moran, because of the sponsorship, so important, and all the local sponsors he's got, he painted that car. That is the exact same car he started the feature in. Larry Roberts, the same thing in the 06 car. They are challenging tight in the point battle, and Keith's going to let them take a chance to warm up the Hoosier Asphalt Racer Slick.
we've got a couple of cars blocking the exit to the track. If you have a minivan, license KJX147, KJX147, or Ford Thunderbird, license number P2L111, P2L111, your vehicles need to be moved immediately or they will be towed. And Tony Jackson ducks into the pit area in car number 56. DJ, as we call him, a former Ozark Coca-Cola Brooklyn champion. Looks like he's going to be out of the action. Well, Jack Daniel is your pace setter in that number one car, the race on Reverend. The rookie driver out of Springfield, Chris Terry, right on his bumper. Mark Chance looking for win number two. Remember, we'll be talking to the winner down in the winner's circle. They also get a free stake dinner from Axel Lays here in Lebanon, Missouri. Daniel to set the pace for the race. Here they come. Three down, 22 to go, and Mr. Foreman says, let's go race time. And the racer Reverend just up that early lead. Meanwhile, chance the veteran. And now watch Tim Jackson. Tim Jackson is on the charge going around the outside of Chris Perry. Now chance in that actual late sponsorship of Lumina trying to run down the racer Reverend. Sam Payne has been on a roll here in the last week or two. And he's got that eagle fast loop. Camaro going to the inside of the fourth Thunderbird of Jim Hayes. Meanwhile, up front, it's the race and river. Jack Daniel, ranked fifth in the track, point standing, still setting the pace. Five down, 20 to go. Five laps down, 20 to go. And Larry Roberts, the car war has now. Back there toward the middle. Just trying to pick up a few points. And J.C. Newell will gain on him should they finish this way. It's still the race and river. Jack Daniel in control. Chance holds on to that number two spot. Tim Jackson now right to the inside of that Pontiac. Starting to make his run now in car number 65. And Payne is on the move. Sam Payne now looks to the inside of Chris Perry. And here comes J.C. Newell. Along with that investor, Carl Lawrence. Back in the retaining guard, down here in turn number one, and the backup car of Carl Lawrence. Remember, that was the former Speedway champion Bill Gillum's machine, losing something evidently in the steering in car number 93, with seven down on the Ozarks Coca-Cola scoreboard, Bob. Ronnie, I had a chance to sit down and talk with Carl Lawrence prior to the racing competition this evening. Did an interview with him for Ozarks Racing Roundup that you'll hear next Friday at 535. We recounted everything that took place last week, and it was really a bizarre scenario, which ended up seeing Lawrence in that 17 machine of Bill Gillum. And, of course, the racing action rolls on next Friday with twin late model features set to take place at Speedway USA in Bolivar. And now the 06 machine, driven this evening by Larry Roberts, heads to the pits. Well, Flans, he's climbing out of the car now. He is a little shaken, but all right. Carl Lawrence driving what was the 17, now the 93 car. The crew worked frantically all week to get this car ready for tonight's third feature. They've got the primary car sitting over there by the trailer. And Bob, Carl said something in the steering broke. So when he went down here three wide, going into turn one, he said it just wouldn't turn and it was heading right to that area. Carl did a great job to avoid what could have been something very dangerous. You know, talking with Carl prior to the races this evening, Ronnie, I said, you know, you've actually got yourself a top five car. As a matter of fact, a couple of weeks ago, two-time Speedway champion Bill Gillum ended his victory of streak by piloting that machine and taking it to Winter Circle. But as Carl pointed out to me, Bill's been in that car for a couple of years. He knows all the ins and outs of that 17 machine. And this is the first time that Lawrence has ever been in that car. He had hoped to practice with it during the week, but never had the opportunity to do it. So he only had what amounted to up until this point, seven laps behind the windshield of now the 93, formerly the 17 machine. Second half of the program tonight, fans, is Gatorade Challenge Night. And in the heat of a race, the driver's whole body gets thirsty. And your body gets thirsty from heat and exercise, too, because you lose more than just water. You lose vital minerals, elements that help your body work. Gatorade Thirst Quencher is scientifically formulated. And I tell you what, he's got that machine underway. If there's any way at all for him to get back up onto the track without losing a lap, Ronnie, he's going to try and want to salute all these fine ladies. Half off in the grandstand and 350 off over in the wild side as it's ladies' night out at the Speedway. 
We're going to award and reward the ladies next week, Ronnie, with a discounted price, especially over the grandstand. We invite you to come up bright and early as the late model stock will hit the track. Extra last for extra cash. And Ronnie, in intermission, AJ's Restaurant and Lounge, we've got dinner for two for the grandstand and the wild side. That's right. $25 certificates. They're open until 1 o'clock this evening, right up there at 1300 South Jefferson. And, of course, each and every one of our feature winners here this evening will receive a three-quarter inch ribeye steak cut dinner from Ashley Mays Steak and Barbecue here in Lebanon, Missouri. And the place everybody goes after the races, Big Daddy's here. We go. The lights are out. Seven down, 18 to go. Mr. Foreman looks the field over and he says, let's go race time. And Chad's getting a great jump that time on the restart. But off a of turn number two, there goes the racer, Reverend Jack Daniel. Now Sam Payne looking to the nice calamity corner, trying to take forth away from Chris Perry. Down the front set they come. Jack Daniel now still in control. So watch Payne and now J.C. Newell. The gentle giant working on the gentleman from Crocker as Hayes and Newell battling out for the number six spot. Meanwhile, Chance a little faster in the corners. The Reverend has the machine a little more power on the straightaways. Once again, Payne and Newell looking to get another spot up as the giant goes in that Oldsmobile. Hayes and Thunderbird goes to the high side by the wild side, and now J.C. Newell is on the charge. Getting ready to head for lap number 10. And now Tim Jackson is on the move. Moving to Missouri, Tim Jackson already with a feature win this season at Class 65. Challenging Mark Chad as Payne trying to get around Chris Perry. It's all the race of Reverend Jack Daniel as they come roaring by the front straight away. Down the front stretch now, the battle for the number two spot. And there goes Payne. Payne, who prefers that low move, now gets that Camaro up on the high groove. He moves up the board, and the Giant is on the charge also. Lawrence, who jumped into the pit area, out of the action. And Jack Daniel now. Oh, and Hayes, a tough as smoke from that auto zone off. Number 34, Thunderbird, and it looks like the jump from Crocker is out of the action. Down the front straightaway they head halfway home as we remain under green, and it's all Jack Daniel in control. 13 down as the racing Reverend builds up a straightaway lead, while now Payne works on Tim Jackson for the number three spot. The battle now for third as Mark Chance pulls away from Jackson just a little bit more. And John Dickerman smacking the wall up here hard in turn number four, and that's going to bring out the yellow flag. Ronnie, that Hoosier Racing Slick is headed all the way over to the wild side, and it looks like it's going to make its way through that opening and head down the back straightaway. And Carl Lawrence has made it back out out of the track, minus the right side in car 93. Now you get to see what a roll cage looks like, fans, just a little bit. And up against the wall in that Oldsmobile body number 18 car, John Dickerman and Looks like something in the Spindler Hub area may be breaking loose, and John was looking for a good top five run here this evening as we've got 14 down and 11 to go. And Bob, can anybody catch that racing reverend? Boy, I tell you what, you get Jack Daniel starting up front, Ronnie, and boy, he started to pull away from the field, but now our, our focus, too, goes back to those point standings, Ronnie, with Larry Roberts in the pits, Carl Lawrence. The pit area trying to gain position Every position very valuable because you're talking about a two-point spread back and forth. Ronnie Swift, 26 points is awarded to the winner of every feature, and you subtract two points for every position behind the leader. So if Jack Daniel wins this race right now, Ronnie, he'll pick up 26 points and gain some valuable track positions too. But the big winner tonight, because he's sitting in third position of the point standings, could still be the gentle giant. It's going to be very interesting when we get those points figured out. Round number two, the Gatorade Challenge part of the late model stock feature this evening under their 20 to 25 lap feature. Of course, that'll be for the extra Gatorade money. The winner from this feature will be starting shot down in that feature. We will then take the top 12 average cars on hand this evening on their, excuse me, on their four race average. We will be inverting them, so some of the cars that were new with us here this evening, such as Ron Dubrow, he'll be starting back toward the rear. But remember, the winner of this feature is still going to have to start shotgun. 
And when you're looking forward to the late model feature, which comes up next in the Bomb Squad feature, only those drivers who are on hand with us last week and had signed in are eligible to run in those features. Second late model feature, Ronnie, tonight's going to be a dandy. That's right. I want to uh, give you a little quick note on that. Such as Tim Flemingen. He was here last week. He had motor problems. He scratched by intermission. So Tim was not on the starting grid lineup. He wasn't going to be able to get in someone else's car for points as everybody else was staying glued to their cars as the lights now go off with 14 down, 11 to go in this late model stock A feature from last week. So uh, Tim will not be eligible to run the third feature this evening due to the fact that he did scratch last weekend by intermission. Here we go. It's still racing Reverend Jack Daniel out in front. Mark Jans right on his bumper. Jackson Payne will keep your eyes on Payne. He's been charging hard and the green is out. We're back to race and action. And Daniel now still in control of the road. Off the pace a little bit. The rookie out of Springfield drops down now to the number six box as JC who is on the charge and Payne is out of the action. Sam Payne blows that number 39 Camaro up just a little bit and Sam with some problems from down in Buffalo. You see Carl Warren going to the inside trying to pick up some position with a Christian play an important role right now as Mark Chad now trying to close in on the race and Reverend. It's all Jack Daniel in that familiar number one Chevrolet Corolla. Now Payne and the gentle giant J.C. Newell battle each other for the number four spot. Payne is back on track now in his Camaro while the old mobile of Newell steps inside. Don Lovett and Tim Jackson. 17 down. We'll get right ahead to lap 18. And it's all Jack Daniel looking for his first. I-44 feature win of the 1994 season. While well, the best battle now on the speedway is for that number four spot. Payne and Newell going nose to tail for the fourth place money here this evening. Roaring down into Calamity Corner. The racing Reverend out of Gravel is Mills. Looking very strong. Chance holds on to that number two spot. Now as they Newell and Payne start Payne looks to the inside. The Giants shut the door. Off of turn number two, Payne now drives that high side in the calamity corner. He'll look to the low side as the racer rubber now will lead lap number 20. Pointing a lap down, only five remain. Tim Jackson, is he secure in third spot? Here comes J.C. Dill and Jackson getting off the pace way up high. By the wall side now, the gentle giant is moving up quickly as Payne and Jackson fight it out for the number four spot. But now, J.C., here comes Tim Jackson and Sam Payne back the battle for the number three spot. The Reverend still in control, but watch the race for the number three spot as the general giant J.C. Newell trying to gain some real valuable track points. Through Calamity Corner is your leader, Jack Daniel. Now, Newell breaks free. The battle for the number four spot between Payne and here comes Chris Perry. Chris Perry, Tim Jackson, and Sam Payne all fighting for the fourth place money. The right side will be coming out this time around for the race of Reverend Jack Daniel. And he's only got one more left to go. Chance holds on to second while the gentle giant J.C. Newell run a third. Now Payne and Tim Jackson continue that torrid battle for the number four spot. But your leader will go through Calamity Corner to the middle group of turn four. The checkered flag is out for Jack Daniel. Chance will come home second. J.C. will be third. Jackson fourth. Payne fifth. Perry will come home sixth. you take that helmet off and get a little fresh air and kind of a little different format tonight but i think you like it don't you well yeah it's nice starting out in front any driver would like to start out there and getting a good position is pretty important in a race very important first of all dave anderson the national maze is going to treat you to a free three-quarter inch steak dinner here in lebanon missouri that's good i'm hungry can i have that in your mission uh don't know you have to talk to dave over there about it it got wild back there behind you. You were long gone, really no competition in that first feature. You were hooked up last Saturday night too and uh, looked like you didn't have to do really very much to get the car ready. 
No, we changed the tires around some and changed the wedge in the car a little bit and uh, worked on an oil leak, and that was it. That was about it real good. Let's talk about those people that helped get you to the racetrack. you got a great crewman over there. Yes, I do. Jim Walls Jr. and Bill Hartley. I couldn't do without them, and my wife is a super trooper, and she's always right in there. And I'd like to thank my sponsors, High Timber Tree Care and Lawn Service is my uh, number one sponsor, Body and Soul Fitness Center, Hanson Concrete, and then I've got Curse Country Mart. Up here on the top, we eat at Wendy's. We got a food sponsor there. And uh, the SOS Mart and Westlake Tire. And uh, this is one of the prettiest ads. Westlake Tire? <laughs> they must be up there. Anyway, I certainly want to thank all my sponsors. The sponsors in every class are really helpful. And I thank the one that gives us all the energy to get out here and do this stuff. That's right. Now, it's the Gatorade Challenge, the second half. Are you ready for that? Because you're going to have to start dead last. We can't change the rules. No way. <laughs> I'll start dead last. Ladies and gentlemen, he'll receive the trophy from last Saturday night's continuation. Let's hear it for the man that's a contender in the stars of the NASCAR Winston Racing Series, racing in the Pacific Coast region. This is our first late model feature for 25 times around. Steve Allison will lead him out. The broken out of Oklahoma Shopper in car number 23. John O'Neill from Nixa in car number 26. Mike Montag is 73 to his outside. Back with us, former Speedway champion from St. Peter's, Missouri, Steve Shive in car number 51. For Showwater from O'Fallon, Illinois in car number 3 to his outside rapid Roy Chisholm in car 57. The next row scheduled was Bud Dickinson at 21. Evidently problems with that fourth Thunderbird. Then we see Paul Wallen in car number 13. Rich Lumbull and Bob Webster at 25. Springfield, Missouri's Archie Griffin, fourth in the region, second in the track points in car number 11. And starting at the rear, he was the runner-up last night at Speedway USA, ranked ninth in the Pacific Coast region, car number 52, Brian Daniel, to his outside. The current NASCAR Winston Racing Series regional leader, car 75, Larry Phillips. They will go 25 times around the high banks of the 11 and I-44 Speedway, and then the Pump Squad will be rolling out here next. Of course, Bill Boyd not back with us, as was Jamie McMurray. McMurray had some other obligations. We'll get one little switch here and get underway, and Bob, the Gatorade Challenge will be a 30, but this will be a 25 lapper. This is the completion of last weekend's program, riding with twin 25 lap late model features on the docket. And talk about some points battles. We've got them in all five divisions. The three-time national champion is the late model points leader, Archie Griffin in the number two position. The Richland Bullet, Bob Webster is third. Roy Chisholm and Levin and Spud Dickinson round out the top five as we get the Pacific Coast region cars and stars lined up properly. We'll let them scuff in those Hoosier racing slicks and Ronnie, this is the first of two big features. Remember, Larry Phillips won two weeks ago in the late model feature. He'll, or he won the first feature here last Saturday night. He starts shotgun in this feature, and the winner of this feature will start dead last in our Gatorade Challenge this evening. As I likely don't sell safe by used car pace car pulls it in, Keith Foreman's going to let him put a little heat inside those racing tires. Bob, real quick, as you check over those points, 
standings. If the fans didn't pick up their copy of the program, they can see the complete total rundown. But let's run down the top ten real quickly in our late model standings. Late model point standings, Ronnie, I tell you what, battles throughout the pack, but as we mentioned a couple of moments ago, the three-time national champion has what at this point appears to be a fairly comfortable lead, Ronnie, but all you need to do is drop out of one race and all of a sudden that lead completely evaporates. Archie Griffin, who will start outside of the next to last row, Ronnie, in the number two position, Bob Webster, Roy Chisholm, Spud Dickens, and round out heads up. Round out the top five. And of course, twin late model features this evening. The second one will be a 30 lap shootout. And boy, you know who really looked strong last night at Speedway USA, Ronnie? He's starting outside of row one. That's John O'Neill out of Springfield. John O'Neill led the first five or six laps of our late model feature. Now, fans, just think some of these cars will be competing in that Arco Challenge Series race. Labor Day weekend, the Johnson Silver Center Summer Shootout as the Trial of Arco Pros once again will invade the high banks of the I-44 Speedway. Got the chance, Frank Stark told me he talked to Dave Weltmeyer up in the Arco race last weekend. Weltmeyer said, we're counting down the date till we get back to Lebanon. We want to become the first Arco repeat winner at the Lebanon I-44 Speedway. Four Arco races, we've had four different winners, Bob. Ronnie, I had an opportunity prior to the races tonight to talk a little bit with Roy Chisholm, who pilots that Chevrolet Illumina sponsored by Ebenezer's and Ball Timbers. He said, you know, my car really got stronger last night as we got about 20 or 25 laps into the main event. He said, what we're trying to do is get it dialed in for the Art Go Challenge as Johnson Service Center presents the Summer Spectacular. Boy, it is going to be a sizzler over the holiday weekend. Once again, that'll be Labor Day weekend. Johnson Service Center here in Lebanon will present the Art Go Stars and Cars of Summer Sizzler Shootout. Well, Keith has got the lights off now. Get set for 25 times around the high banks of the Lebanon I-44 Speedway. The Gatorade Challenge, which will be our second late model feature of the evening, will be going 30 times around. Second half of the show will be normal. Super stocks will go 20. The modifieds will be 15. The late model stock 25. Late model 30. Long squad will be 15. And here they come out. She says, oh, I'll drop the green, but I don't think so. from the crew chief. The crew chief's by now standing way over there off of turn number four where they can get a good look at the car. It's evidently a little debris down there in that number two turn right now. Bob, it's the Ozarks Racing Roundup Friday night at 535 on your way over to Bolivar to watch the double late model features. And Ronnie, we're going to have an opportunity to talk a lot of late model stock driving. As we visited with Carl Lawrence prior to the races tonight, he recapped last weekend's bizarre scenario. Also talked with Jack Daniel, who started on the pole tonight as he was a leader after three weeks last week. We had a chance to recap what happened then, get their thoughts going into tonight. We'll also hear from Spud Dickens in that 535 next Friday on Regional Radio. Here we go. The lights now go off around this green mile asphalt oval. And Broken Arrow home for home a show for Steve Allison. We'll set the pace for the race. Watch that second row. That Budweiser Chevrolet is Steve Shive out of St. Peter's, Missouri. Steve, who knows the fast way around. A former Grand American late model champion. Here they come. The young Allison has set the pace. And the green is out. Red action. Red shot action. And oh, watch out. Shive gets it sideways. And collects. Also up there, Port Water and Paul Wallen. And a severe front end damage done to the Luminol Shive. Wallen's old mobile, the old Sullivan furniture machine. And Coach Walter all collected up down off of turn number two. Ronnie, we talked going into tonight's racing action about five of the top ten in the Pacific Coast region point standing being at the track this evening. Four are on the track and competing in tonight's first feature. But one of them looks like his night, at least for the first feature, is drawn to a conclusion as that old Sullivan-sponsored car of Paul Wallen caught up in the action in between turns one and two and it looks like he's going to have to head back to the pits on the end of a record. Hope that crew out of the Lockwood area 
is able to get him put back together, if not for this feature, for the second main event for the Pacific Coast Regional Cars and Stars. The Bomb Squad is in the staging area. They will hit the track next in their first of two big features as Wallen has that Oldsmobile fired up. He's top 10 in the region and headed back to the pit. They're going to try and make some quick repairs before he falls behind the lap. And with no laps down on the Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard, we're going to need to get the field lined up in an original restart position side by side and nose to tail. And Ronnie, that should give Wallen's crew, which does such a super job, an opportunity to get him back on the track. Second half of tonight's program, of course, is Gatorade night. This is Gatorade's 10th big year of involvement with NASCAR, a sponsor of the Gatorade Circle of Champions program. One very important element of their involvement is Gatorade night, like this evening, at NASCAR Winston Racing Series track. And the drivers love Gatorade night because the winner in each NASCAR division will receive a bonus prize money award from Gatorade. They'll get that check direct from Daytona Beach in a couple of weeks or so. Gatorade night officially starts with the second half of the program. Now making a hard charge and 
Chevrolet Beretta. Just one move needs to be made to the field, and we should have ourselves a pretty good lineup with six laps down on the Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard. 19 laps remaining for the Pacific Coast Regional Cars and Stars. And Keith Foreman is looking for a start this time around. If we can get the cars in their proper position, and it Looks like that may not happen. O'Neill is second, Griffin third. Webster, Brennan fourth, Brown, Brian, Daniel rounding out your top five. Six down. Six laps down. We've got 19 to go in our first plate model feature of the evening. And Larry Phillips looking to pass some more lead in the Western Racing Series action. Here they come as Mr. Foreman says, let's go racers. And O'Neill. Driver from Nixon, Missouri. But here comes Griffin now roaring down into Calamity Corner. O'Neill prefers that middle to high line. Archie tucks it right down on the pole. But Phillips now setting the pace for the race. O'Neill drifting a little high. There goes Archie on the inside. Wheel to wheel. They go at 110 miles an hour plus through the wild side. Down on the low side now in turn number four. While Phillips sets the pace. Now Archie moves into second place. O'Neill continues to use that high line, and here comes the Richland Boulevard Rutzer and last year's sportsman champion, Brian Daniel. While it's all Larry Phillips as they head for lap number nine, Webster dies to that low side, while Daniel now works the high move. Griffin in second for Larry O'Neill. Real sideways, does a great job of keeping the car under control. But your third place runner now drops to the rear of the field, and we now have 10 down. Griffin in the number two, so now watch that battle for third between Bob Webster and Brian Daniel. While Roy Chisholm holds on to a top five finish here this evening. Off the turn four, Phillips still continues to set the pace. Griffin in that number two spot, while Webster and Daniel fight it out for third place money. Roy Chisholm, Joe Walter, Montag, and O'Neill all fighting for a top five finish here this evening as we now get halfway home. Phillips leads lap number 12, while Griffin continues to hold on to second spot. Bob Webster, the cord is a little on the loose side, binding in the corners, but lots of power from the B&B engines machine. Down the front straightaway, Phillips now, 13 down, 12 to go, while they start to string it out. Watch the battle for the number five spot. Roy Chisholm, Mike Montag is now on the move in that sugar line and and Montag looking for his best finish of the 1994 season. While the top four are stationary, Rapid Roy Chisholm has a race on his hands out of rookie driver Levin and Mike Montag and Kurt Schroeder on the move and that such and signs number three car from out of Illinois. Phillips with about a full straightaway lead over your second place for the Archie Griffin and now Webster starting to ride Griffin down. While we do not pass, and number five spot, Chisholm and Montag continue their tour battle. Now only nine laps from another NASCAR victory here this evening. While Chisholm and Montag have the best race of the evening for the number five spot. Watch 
much in the battle by the wild side for fourth place. Chisholm and Montag continue to do it out. As we got 17 down, only eight remain. As everybody right now consents to hold on to the position. Montag now tries Chisholm once again down low. By the wild side, Roy Chisholm looking for fifth place points and money here in feature number one. As we've only got seven remaining. Daniel Ray in back in the number four spot. But it's all the three time NASCAR champion Rory Phillips. Only six to go. Webster and Griffin now as Archie hangs on to second. Webster third. Daniel fourth. And watch that race for them. Roy Chisholm and Mike Montag continue to go bumper to bumper for the number five position. Chisholm continues to use that middle of the high line while Montag tries to get that bread to the low move. Turn number two, Roy Chisholm in that ball, Timber Chevrolet level up. Holding on to fifth, Montag making his run. Put 21 down now. Phillips, the clear falling, and that's first my pickup covers on the 75 car. Once again, the battle now on the speedway for the number five spot. And Montag, Shaw Roller and O'Neill, all trying to get around Roy Chisholm. The race now down the front straightaway. Roy Chisholm running hard in that 57 car. Archie Griffin seems to be gaining some ground on the Club Pacific Coast Regional Leader. But the white flag will be coming out this next time around for the 75 machine on Larry Phillips. Off to Calamity Corner. Griffin closing up quickly, but we've only got one more left to go. Griffin trying to reel in the three-time champion. Does Larry have something of this with that David Ray motor? Off Calamity Corner. He takes the high side at turn number four, winning our first feature across 75, Larry Phillips. Montag losing position to Joe Walter. As Chisholm hangs on to fifth, Joe Walter six. Tension in the pit. Super stock A feature to the staging area. Super stock A feature, first call to the staging area, please. Bobby Hammer, the second, leads him out in car 90. John Colton, the 94. There's Jason Woods piloting the 92. Jesse Hawkins in 06. Dan Graves on the track in the 66 machine. Linda Craig in 20. Terry Holtkamp in car 2. That's Larry Pruitt in 02. Rick Barker in car 5. Don Scroggins in the 03 machine. Four former points leader, George Huey Jr. in 41. Your current points leader, Spanky Weiss in car 11. Robert Reeves in 6. Chris Shoemaker in 21. Cleo Jasper's 93 machine. Rick Barker in 12. Mike Benson in car 23. The 17 of Brad Phillips also making his way onto the track. Teresa Holiday in car 18 as we get ready for 15 laps of bomb squad excitement. Randall Weddle also makes it out in car 32. And you look at car 28, normally driven by Mike Mc McMullen, but now behind the wheel is Gary Klossner, normally chauffeuring that big Ford number 15. As the field gets lined up behind the Laclede Auto Sales Ford Mustang, 15 times around the high banks of the I-44 Speedway, and the Bomb Squad point standings all of a sudden have really tightened up. And a couple of weeks ago, you thought that Spanky Weiss was going to run away with the championship, but that is no longer the case. Spanky Weiss now with 260 points. Robert Reeves is only eight behind with 252. Gary Kloster, George Huey, and Larry Pruitt round out your top five for the Bomb Squad. Attention in the pits, please. Second call, Super Stock A feature to the staging area. Super Stock A feature, head to the staging area. The lights go off around the high banks of the I-44 Speedway. It's Colton and Hammer in row one. 
the second row of the 66 machine driven by Dan Craze and Jason Wood. And talking to Craig in row three, Keith Foreman of the Bomb Squad, 15 times around, let's go racing! Don't look for him to take too long before going three wide as they dial turn one. And it's Woods in that 92 machine, leading Colt Graves in the number three spot. Hammer and Hawkins, your top five as they hit Calamity Corner for the first time this evening. It's Jason Woods in 92 down the front stretch. And oh, did Hammer get high and almost smack the wall coming off of turn four. As Wood sets his sight on the back straightaway. Carlton hanging out of the number two spot. Hawkins is third. And Huey and Graves get together and loop it. And Huey rides the wall. Pruitt making contact with Graves. And he'll usher him back to the pitch as the caution comes out. Stretch claims his first three victims of the evening. And you don't want to ride real close to that white line as you get set for Calamity Corner as you're just looking for trouble. A single lap down on the Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard. And the red flag will bring the field to a stop. the 21 Grand American Late Model, they provided us with some $25 gift certificates, which essentially is dinner for two. Wild side, this first one is for you. If you've got this ticket, head on over to the tower. We'll go ahead and pass that out to you. Ticket number 02865. 02865. That's yours, Wild Side. Head over to the tower. We'll pass it out. Dinner for two from AJ's Restaurant and Lounge, 02865. And another dinner for two from AJ's Restaurant and Lounge. Boy, they do just a great job of serving the race community. Open until just after 1 o'clock this morning. You can even head there after the races if you'd like. Dinner for two, ticket 90840. 90840. That's yours, head to the tower, 90840. Gatorade does. They put this money back into an account is what it amounts to. It set up so much money for your main event division, then what you call your second class, third class, fourth class, and fifth class. It's pretty good money. It only goes to the winner. So uh, the winner's the one that gets to reap the benefits as the rest of the drivers running for the regular purse here tonight. But the Gatorade Challenge, a real good thing set up by the Winston Racing Series. The lights go off. Nose to tail with a lap down, 14 laps remaining. Keep in mind that Gary Klosser has been on a roll, not in the 15 machine. He's in car 28 this evening. Jason Woods, your race leader. John Colton, second. Jesse Hawkins, third. Terry Holtkamp and Bobby Hammer round out your top five as a bomb squad. Hits Calamity Corner and Keith Foreman with 14 laps remaining in our third of eight features tonight. What do you say? Let's go racing! As Woods will hit turn one as your leader, Holt Camp challenging Hawkins on the inside of the battle for third. Rick Parker also can fly forward. Now in the number five position. But it's Jason Woods in car 92. Heading down the front straightaway with two laps down. 13 laps remaining in our third of eight big features. Woods one, Colton two. Here comes Holt Camp. Parker and Hawkins with track points later. Spanky Weiss is looking at a move into the top six. As Parker and Hawkins exchange a little sheet metal, and they're going two deep, headed into turn one in a battle for second, maybe three wide. Hope and Parker and Colton all dueling and nice in four position. But it's Wood choosing that battle. Able to open up about a 7-8 car length advantage. And now Parker at car five on the move up to the number three position. 
the field, headed down the back straightaway. We've got four laps down at Eurozark Coca-Cola scoreboard. Your top five of Wood, Colkin, Barker, Reeves, and Colton. Weiss now up to the number six position. Your track points leader. Jason Wood takes the start finish line a third of the way through. Five laps down, and the red flag is out. on your Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard. Second half of the program will start off with the Superstock A feature followed by the late model. Your attention in the pitch, please. Superstock A feature to the staging area, please. Superstock A feature hit the staging area. Third call. Four laps down on the Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard. Woods is your race later. Terry Holtkamp in the number two position. Rick Barker being shown third in that familiar number five machine. for the first point of the year. Holt Camp riding in the number two position. Barker is third. And the Bomb Squad point standings could really start to shuffle this evening. Spanky Weiss, the track points leader, heading into the racing action this evening. But that lead has really started to dwindle. coming up over the holiday weekend. Johnson Service Center serving the Lebanon and Laclede County area for better than 20 years will present a summer spectacular 100 laps of sizzling late model excitement as the Artco Stars and cars make their second appearance in the Ozarks this year. The lights go off. 11 laps remaining for the bomb squad. Superstock A feature is on the docket next as Woods takes the bomb squad on that slow, methodic, hourglass, sundial bomb squad pace in the calamity corner. They're lined up halfway around the track. Woods to stand on the accelerator. Keith Foreman to say to the bomb squad, let's go racing. The battle is right at the front of the pack as Parker challenges Holt Camp on the inside for the number two position. Down into Calamity Corner they go. Woods, Holt Camp, Parker, Reeves, and Spanky. Holt Camp gets a little bit loose going slow on the track as Woods hits the start finish line with five down and Phillips boots it down the back stretch and Scroggin has stalled in between turns three and four in that zero three machine. So back. 
back to the last completed lap with four laps down on the Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard, 11 laps remaining. And of course, this is the Gatorade Challenge evening. It'll heat up during the second half of the racing action. Gatorade's 10th year of involvement with NASCAR, the sponsor of the Gatorade Circle of Champion program. One very important element of their involvement is Gatorade nights, like this evening, here at the I-44 Speedway. The drivers love Gatorade night because the winner in each NASCAR division gets a bonus check direct from Daytona Beach. And in addition to Gatorade nights, the Gatorade Circle of Champions is a program that recognizes the winners and champions in every one of NASCAR's 10 touring divisions, as well as the NASCAR Winston Racing Series. And talk about some big money. Over $300,000 will be awarded to the Gatorade Circle of Champions program once again this year. If you're looking for that mid-evening snack, the concession stand is wide open for your business. You're talking about hamburgers, cheeseburgers, hot dogs, chili dogs, cotton candy, popcorn, all the ice cold Ozark Coca-Cola Dr. Pepper products. Keith Foreman's very own favorite, Sean C's ice cream, is also on sale. It looks like we've got ourselves a pretty good lineup. Four down, 11 remaining. That powerful right arm of the Ozarks' number one flagman, Keith Foreman, will go in the air. Woods, Holkin, Barker, Colton, and Reeves, your top five. Woods down the back stretch. Pulled him, Barker, Colton, Reed's the top five. Then the points leader, Spanky Weiss. It's an 11-lap shootout to the grassroots of area racing and Keith Foreman of the bottom squad. What do you say? Let's go racing. As Woods will hit turn one as your race leader. And Spanky Weiss about to be passed by Linda Craig. There's a great points battle with Spanky Weiss in the sixth machine of Robert Reeves who stands to pick up some ground at this point. But it's Jason Woods coming off of turn four and across the start finish line with five down on the Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard. Old Camp and Marker, your top three runners. Reeves trying to move forward another spot, pick up a couple of more valuable track points. But it's Jason Woods in car 92 opening up a two car length advantage as they head down the front stretch with six laps down. Holt Camp now right on the bumper of the 92 machine. Reeves drive the high side, found no running room there. Go back down low. Can't pick up any additional ground. As Woods challenged by a Holt Camp for the lead. In a battle for the number five spot, it's Craig and Spanky. We've got seven laps down, eight laps remaining. As Bobby Hammer takes car 90 to the pit. Woods. Parker, Holkamp, Reeves trying to split the difference in car six. What a move for Robert Reeves as they go into Calamity Corner. Reeves from fourth to second. Down the front straightaway. We've got eight laps down. Work the little white line. Looping it going into turn one. Down the back stretch. It is now Robert Reeves, your new race leader. Reeves, Parker, Holkamp, Spanky, and Craig, your top five. And Holkamp loops it, spins into Spanky, shooting Craig into the wall, who loops it around. Colton also involved. And that'll bring up the caution flag. Well, Linda Craig had nowhere to go in that 20 machine and took it above the white line and almost picked off a record. Eight laps down on the Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard. We're looking, we're looking at a seven-lap shootout. An awful lot of fluid dropped on the entrance to turn four. Robert Reeves, though, in car number six, the race leader, and an opportunity for Reeves to pick up a couple more valuable track points. 
But all of a sudden, moving into the mix after dropping out of the top five is track points leader Spanky Weiss in car number 11. Chris Shoemaker and I believe Cleo Jasper, the other car involved in that incident on the entrance to turn three, as Terry Holtkamp makes it back out in car two. Shoemaker's car 21 with an awful lot of damage to that machine on the end of a wrecker will be taken back to the pit area. Jesse Hawkins heads back out in 06. This will shoot out as the lights are off, Bob. We're back to the Bob Squad feature. And let's go racing with Rick Barker. Leading the Bomb Squad first of two features tonight, and track points leader Spanky Weiss right on his bumper. Mike Benson riding in the number three position, and then Gary Gloucester followed by George Huey Jr. as the field heads down the front straightaway. Nine laps down, six laps remaining. Weiss challenging Parker for the lead as they dial the back stretch. Benson hanging on to third. They're side by side in a battle for the lead as they hit Calamity Corner. Weiss on the high side, Parker on the low side. Down the front straightaway they go with 10 laps down. And Spanky Weiss in car 11. Your two race leader, Parker, slides back to the number two position. And Gloucester hanging on to third. Look at that battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth with Benson, Huey, and now John Colt. We'll have 11 laps down. Four laps remaining for the Bob Squad. Street Stock A feature comes your way next. As we hit Calamity Corner, Bobby Hammer back to the pitch in car 90. Off of turn four down the front straightaway. Track points leader Spanky Lee's leading Parker by only a couple of car lengths. Closter in the number three position as the field heads into Calamity Corner. This time around we will have 13 laps in the book. Only two laps remaining. Weiss, who had a huge points lead earlier this season, has seen that dwindle. He'll pick up some more running room tonight as Robert Reeves has dropped out of the first feature. The white flag is coming out. This time around for that 11 machine of Spanky Weiss Barker on his bumper. And they've got one more lap to go. Any little mistake could turn this feature to a victory for Rick Barker. Spanky one, Barker two, Gloucester three. They hit Calamity Corner for the final time. Barker looks to the inside. Spanky right in the middle group. The checkered flag for Spanky. We Barker comes home second. Gloucester and another four comes home third. George, Huey Jr. and Mike Benson round out your top five. Ignoring car number 18, Steve Edgecombe at 65, Wayne Lewis at 14, second in the track point standing, Tom Klaus at 42, Ron Boyd at 22, Joe Jones at Stratford in 5, Jim McCowan in car number 12, Jim Hunt out of Springfield in car number 15, Robbie Johnson back with us in double zero, Mike Shaddy at 16, George and Charlie Johnson in that number one car, the chicken man, George Stark out of Springfield will be in the old timer's car and starting dead last. He is your track point leader from Rolla, Missouri, the number 97 Camaro of Troy Costello. 
20 times around for our Super Stock A feature. They're ready to take the Gatorade Challenge here, Bob. And it's going to be another interesting story. And Constable comes from the back to the front once again. Ronnie, that McLean Auto Sales Ford Mustang will lead the field around for one more pace lap. And boy, I tell you what, running on the restrictor plate, these cars are so even, Ronnie. It's tough to pick out a winner on any given night. The Thunder and Lightning of the Modifieds will hit the track next, followed by the late model stocks, then the late models, and the bomb squad. As we save the best for last. This is feature night, and this starts the second half of the program in Gatorade challenging me. This, of course, Gatorade's 10th big year of involvement with NASCAR as a sponsor of the Gatorade Circle of Champions, and of course, Gatorade Nights. And Gatorade puts better than $300,000 through the Gatorade Circle of Champions program year in and year out. Roddy, the lights are going off. As we said, 20 times around for the Super Stock A feature here this evening. The Gatorade Challenge, all these drivers set to take it. It's going to be Steve Shaw out of Rogersville to set the pace for the race of that 19 car. Walt Leiker to his outside in car number nine. Row two, flying Brian Brown at 11 with Jim Cage. Watch Mike Paul in that number four car and Joey Oscar in 44. Here they come, looking for Mr. Foreman's green flag and... We're back to race in action. And Liker pulls way up high, well off the pace here on the start. Three wide, they go into turn number two. It's going to be Steve Shaw to set the pace. Brian Brown right on his bumper. Three wide into Calamity Corner now. Whitener and Edge go the Eaters gentleman on the charge. But sure, and there goes the Chris Nichols, locks it up hard, coming off a of turn number four as George Stork and Mike Shaddy also together, and that's gonna bring out the yellow flag. This will be an original restart, side by side and nose to tail as four cars caught up and riding. This shows you the caliber of driver you've got at the Speedway too, because at least three or four more could have been caught up in that incident on the exit to turn four, but they were able to get out of the break quick enough and slide to the low side and avoid the number 10 machine of Chris Nichols who had looped it coming off of four. Tough break for Whitener too in that 18 machine who had really been certain turning some heads over the last three weeks at the Speedway. Look at the front of the field and Jim Cates in that 91 car really had a strong run going last night and Speedway USA and Bolivar eventually would fall back a bit but Cates ended up with a third place finish behind Wayne Lewis and Robbie Johnson but a strong run for the chauffeur who was looking for his first win of the year. get the field line up bringing out the red flag it'll be easier to line up the field under a red flag situation brand American modifies will hit the track next there in the staging area good friends at LeClean Auto Sales safe buy used cars year after year Lebanon's number one used car dealer Big Daddy's Family Restaurant and B&B Auto Truck Plaza, exit 127 off I-44 in Lebanon. You talk about the Central Bank with a couple of convenient locations, and also the Boatman's Bank of Pulaski County, and of course, Johnson Service Center, presenting the Art Go Challenge Series over the Memorial Day weekend as the lights go off. The green is out once again. We're ready to take the Gatorade Challenge. Three wide, they go through turn number two. 
but it's Steve Shaughness at the early pace, and meanwhile Charlie Johnson and Robbie Johnson on the charge, along with the leader Constable, through Calamity Court, oh, Jim McEwen getting way high, does a great job in that Malibu, as Edgecombe now falls off the pace. The two-time winner, the English gentleman, Steve Edgecombe, out of the action now. But it's Steve Shaw out of Rogersville, Missouri, to set the pace once again. And here comes Scott Phillips. Phillips to Case, wheel to wheel. And Joey Osborne on the move quickly. Now Case makes it on. And here comes Phillips right on the outside. Three wide, they're going back in the middle of the pack. Oh, Shaw and Case, it's Mufford. Case along with Oxford. Wayne Lewis gets by as Shaw is also involved. And Nichols with severe front end damage done to his car. And Brian Brown is against the wall. Chris Nichols and Kim McCowan are both also ahead of the pit. Actually, Gary Wall in car 12, and Shaw will also head to the pit. Looks like Cates has got a flat tire in that 91 machine. He'll also head to the pit. Been a rough night for Joey Oxer in car 44. Look at the Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard. This will be a nose-to-tail restart with Phillips and Mike Paul running one and two. And boy, Mike Paul, one of the Rookie of the Year contenders in that number four machine. Joey Oxer is going to try and continue in car 44 as he will tack on to the rear of the field. And he's another one who's really been turning some heads over the last month or so, making the move up from the bomb squad division into the super stock ranks. And Brian Brown will get a shove in car two and head back to the pit see if he and the crew can't get that back onto the track before falling behind by a lap. But it is the three machine of Phillips, your race leader with Mike Paul now running second. As the debris is taken care of down the back stretch. Just a couple of changes need to be made to the field and we should have ourselves a pretty good lineup. Well, I'll tell you what, another strong run this evening for Wayne Lewis in the Cameo Carpet sponsored car number 14. And it looks like Phillips will dock into the pit, now giving the lead to a rookie contender in Mike Paul, Wayne Lewis running in the number two position. Steve Edgecombe back in car 65. Each and every feature winner gets themselves a free steak dinner, courtesy of Dave Anderson, the folks at Ashley Bay Steak and Barbecue on East Highway 32. Well, a rookie driver now leading our superstar feature, ready to take that Gatorade challenge. Wayne Lewis right on his bumper. Tom Klaus is now third. Ron Boyce with a good run here early as Chris Nichols makes it back out now in car number 10. Robbie Johnson back to the number five slot. Charlie Johnson with his new car currently holding on to six. Your point leader, Constable, started dead last now. He's running up into the number seven spot as Case gets the tire changed. The crew did a great job, but he'll hit the tack on to the rear of the field. As you can see, two down, 18 to go. And Bob, it's still anybody's race. Need to make one change to the field, but Ronnie, you talk about a great job. Jim Cage in that crew of the 91 machine. Boy, did they make that tire change in a big hurry as the lights go off. Head back to the infield, Ronnie. Mike Paul taking Calamity Corner, and now the caution is back on. And Charlie Johnson taking the high line and diving into the pits in car one. Lights are off. 
fourth inning for a restart in this super soft feature. Paul Yolito, Lewis is second. Plows third. We're getting ready to just set the green flag action. Here they come, and she's going to say, let's go, race time. And Lewis and Plows make a dive to the inside. Try to challenge our rookie driver, Levin and Mike Paul. Wayne Lewis down low. Paul on the high side. Plows trying to follow through. And now Robbie Johnson is on the move along with your point leader, Constable. Going through Calamity Corner now. Nichols trying to stay up in the top of the point standings. Will gain a few points here this evening. Wayne Lewis now setting up blistering face in that number 14 car. But now Robbie Johnson and Troy Constable on the move quickly. The battle side by side for the number five spot. Meanwhile, the Klaus man looks down lower ball into Calamity Corner. Wheel to wheel they come. Klaus a little bit loose, but it's all Wayne Lewis out in front. Lewis, your pace center, Paul in that number two spot. Klaus now still hanging on to third as Lewis starts to stretch out the lead in that number 14 machine. As Scott Phillips heads to the pit one more time. Five laps are now down, 15 remain. As Lewis going around the lap, car, Steve Shaw. Klaus is on the outside of Paul. Here comes the battle wheel to wheel for the number two spot. And Johnson and Constable also on the move. Off a turn four, it's your pace center. Wayne Lewis as Tom Klaus now in sole possession of the number two spot. Meanwhile, Constable, Paul, and Robbie Johnson and the team from down in Miller, Missouri is on the charge with a double donut car. Now Constable trying to make his move into Calamity Corner. It's Lewis now all by himself. And here comes Charlie Johnson back out in car number one. Lewis one, Klaus two, Robbie now third. As Robbie uses his Charlie's car as a pick to make the move around Paul and Constable. Going to Calamity Corner now, it's all way Lewis as we head for eight laps down. Klaus in that number two spot. Robbie Johnson is third. Constable now on fourth. Mike Paul fifth. Boyce is running six. Whitener running seventh. Hawk running eighth. Jones ninth. Pitchcomb rounds out to top ten. Off a of turn four now. Tom Klaus starting to gain a little ground on last night's Gatorade Challenge winner Wayne Lewis. And now Robbie Johnson hooking up that double donut car. Meanwhile, Constable trying not to lose any points to Tom Klaus. After getting ready to head around the lap car, Mike Shaddy. Coming halfway home, Lewis still in full charge. Klaus to that number two spot, while Robbie climbing on strong in third. Constable, your point leader, back and forth. Mike Paul rounds out your top five. As now Whitener and Edgecombe trying to stay on that lead lap of Wayne Lewis. Going down the front straightaway. Lewis still setting the pace. But now Klaus and Johnson continue that battle for the number two and three spot. Meanwhile, Constable all by himself back and forth. Roaring by the wild side, Lewis in full charge on the Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard as we have 12 down, 12 laps down, 8 laps to go. Enter enough time for the St. James show for Tom Klaus to make a run on Wayne Lewis. Meanwhile, Robbie Johnson holding his own into third in that double donut machine. Off of turn four once again. Lewis setting the pace as Klaus now getting clear of the lap traffic. But here comes Robbie Johnson. Robbie on the move now, trying to get close enough to Klaus. The challenge for that runner-up spot. Meanwhile, your point leader Constable trying to stay in striking distance. Paul running fifth, Boyce is sixth, Whitener seventh, Edge goal eight, Hunt running ninth, Oxford in the top ten. Down the front straightaway, you see a five-car train for Charlie Johnson down at least one lap now in car number one. Going by the wild side, they go into Calamity Corner. This is where Clown seems to gain the most ground on Lewis as the five-lap warning is now given. Fifteen down, five remain. Robbie's going to make the charge down low. Wheel to wheel. They touch up a turn number two. And the double donut car loops it hard in turn number two. Boy, Robbie Johnson able to pick up an awful lot of ground going in and out of the corners, especially in three and four. And gotten right on the rear bumper of Tom Claus's 42 machine. They exchanged a little contact that time, and Robbie looped the double donut machine. As we look at the Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard with 15 laps down and five laps remaining, and now 
Now Tom Klaus glued right on the rear bumper of Wayne Lewis in car number 14. Track point standings for the street stocks coming in at tonight's main event. Troy Constable with the lead. Tom Klaus in the number two position. Wayne Lewis is currently third. Robbie Johnson and Steve Edgecombe round out your top five. So can Wayne Lewis hang on to the top spot? Or will Tom Klaus be able to shuffle by the 14 machine and take home tonight's Gatorade Challenge? Extra money to each and every one of these next five feature winners. Courtesy of Gatorade, and that check not to come from the Speedways, Ronnie, but that check will come from Daytona Beach, Florida. Well, Lewis had built up a little bit of a commanding lead. Klaus and Johnson were really starting to reel him in. As you see, we've got 15 down. This is going to be a five-lap shootout. And of course, Constable, your point leader now, running back in that number three spot. This is a chance for Lewis and Klaus to gain a little bit in that point standings as we get down to the wire with about a month left in the point season. Lewis and Klaus, Johnson at least one down in that number one car. Constable is third, Paul is running fourth, Boyd's fifth, Edgecombe sixth, Whitener is seventh, Oxford eighth, Jones ninth, Kate staying on that lead lap, rounds out your top ten. The lights are off. A little shuffling back in the middle of the pack. We're looking on the restart. Here they come. Lewis brings them in slow. Now he picks up the pace. And we're back to race in action. And Klaus trying to make that low rear stick. Lewis goes even lower. The battle with the Gatorade Challenge on the line. Up in the front of the pack. Lewis now pulls away by two colleagues. And here comes Constable on the move. Meanwhile, they've come down now with only four to go. Lewis trying to hold off the challenges of Tom Klaus. As Constable now trying to get around the lap car of Charlie Johnson. Robbie Johnson is on the charge. After being involved there in turn number two, he's quickly working his way back up towards the top five. It's Lewis and Klaus. Constable now trying to make that low brew stick and watch the battle off of turn four. Edgecombe now has worked his way up to the number four spot. Mike Paul, Jody Whitener, Oxford, Boyce, and Robbie Johnson. This is all for fourth place at this time. New Calamity Corner now. Klaus trying to make it around as they come down for lap number 18. It's Lewis in charge. Klaus right there on his bumper. Your point later, Constable. Not enough to up to around the lap. Claude Charlie Johnson has Charlie running at racing speed. The white flag is going to be coming around. This time for Wayne Lewis and Tom Klaus with only one more lap to go. Lewis and Klaus, does Klaus have enough left in that Valvoline spot to 42? Lewis gets the better bite up a turn number two. Right in the Calamity corner. The checker flag is in the hands of Keith Foreman, and it's gone away for Wayne Lewis. Klaus second, Constable third, Hitchcomb unofficially fourth, Johnson fifth, Paul Oxford, Whitener, Boyce, and Kate. He's going to unstrap the safety harnesses, take the helmet off, drop the window in that. Ronnie, I bet this driver needs a little bit Gatorade because, boy, he was being pushed until the last lap, getting ready to climb out of that Cameo Carpet sponsored car number 14. Tonight's Gatorade Challenge winner for the Super Stocks. Here he comes, Wayne Lewis. Woo! You like those extra money races, don't you, Wayne? Oh, yeah, helps out on the car. Keep it out here. Uh, looks like you borrowed a suit here this evening. What's the deal? Yeah, I got mine all washed up and had it by the door ready to go and forgot it. <laughs> you forgot your driver's suit. Whose car, you, whose suit you got here tonight? I got, uh, charging Charlie Johnson. Charlie rolling in his suit. First of all, compliments of Ashley Mays. I know you've ate up there a few times. Got another one of those steak dinners for you. Thank you. Oh, thank you real quick. Boy, Tom Klaus, you guys were going nip and tuck, and on the start of that race, you're back there in the middle, three and four wide down there in Calamity Corner. That's got to be very treacherous for everybody. 
Yeah, you just got to take your time and be careful out there and do the best you can, not hit nobody. <laughs> you guys always like to collect these hats. You got that Gatorade hat from last night over at Speedway USA Bottle Pool, where you were the point leader. And uh, great run. Let's talk about the crew, the guys that get you on the track. Yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Cameo Carpets, Wayne and Ron's Custom Flooring Insulation, Julie and Sharon Bond, and uh, all the Swearingen family and then the 14 Late Mall that helped me get here. That 15 car, just curious, is that a backup car for you with Jim Hunt? No, that's his car, and uh, we built it for him. Some of my old parts and some parts he had, and we got him a car together because he likes the racing. Looks real good, fans. Tonight's Gatorade Challenge winner out of Springfield, the Cameo Carpets number 14 car of Wayne Lewis. Jody Nickerson, head of the tower, for a phone call. Jody Nickerson, head of the tower. Well, I tell you what, Ronnie, on Gatorade Challenge night, we also have the added distinction of passing out some gift certificates for dinner for two from AJ's Restaurant and Lounge. One of them not claimed, so I tell you what, let's call out another ticket number eight. Hang on to those ticket stubs, fans. Here is your opportunity to win dinner for two. Six nine, let out by Terry Taylor out of Fairgrove in car 66 in that Tracy's KJ pet sponsored machine. Formerly competing in the Bob Squad, now with the open wheel thunder and lightning in car 73, Russell Gray. He's not a rookie to winner circle in a modified out of Camdenton in car 21, Brian Marler. He is the track points leader at Speedway USA and here at the I-44 Speedway in car 91, David Bates. Lucas Hanley to the tower. Lucas Hanley to the tower. And in car five, already a winner a couple of times this year, Brian Kapika. In car number one, that's Mike Burris. And last weekend's feature winner. Although he did not stop in the winner circle and is still taking a ribbing over it, in car four out of the St. Louis area, Vinny Throckmorton. The modified point standings all of a sudden have really started to tighten up as the pace car heads back to the pits and we'll give the modified an opportunity to heat up those Hoosier racing slicks. Great train, and here comes track points leader David Bates. 
Challenging Marler for second, but the Kansas and Chopper slams the door shut as Taylor hits the start finish line first. Five down, ten remaining for the Mighty Modified. It turned into a five-car battle for the lead, and Marler and Taylor side by side down the front straightaway. A battle for the top spot as they hit turn one. Bates in the catbird seat. They go down the back stretch, and Brian Marler. turning things up for the Gatorade Challenge. Right after. Right after the second late model feature, we will have our 50-50 raffle drawing. You look at your Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard, you see seven laps down. Eight laps down, seven laps remaining. The driver in the lead is Brian Marler. David Bates running second. Benny Throckmorton, who won last week, is third. Terry Taylor fourth, and Brian Kapinka in the number five position. Tonight, feature winners get that added cash from Daytona Beach as part of the Gatorade Challenge. And the lights will go off this time around. Nose to tail, seven laps remaining. Can Marler hang on and pick up another feature win tonight? Or will this be the night the drought ends for track points leader David Bates? Can Throckmorton make it two in a row at the I-44 Speedway? And if he does, will he stop in winter circle? A seven-lap shootout. Marler stands on the accelerator. Let's go racing. Marler, Bates, Throckmorton, Taylor, and Kapika, your top five. As Kapika challenges Taylor on the inside for the number four spot. But it's Marler about a two-car length advantage over Bates who challenges on the inside. Nine laps down, six laps remaining. The candidate chauffeur able to open up a slight lead in the straightaways, but Bates has some running room in the corner. Marler, Bates, and Rockport, your top three runners with ten down, five laps remaining on the Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard. That three-car freight train dialing the back stretch. Marler looking for yet another win this year, looking to tighten up the point race. We've got 11 down and only a two-car length advantage. Keep this in mind for the last lap. Look at all the running room that Bates is able to make up at turn four. They go into Calamity Corner. Marler and Bates, one and two. 12 laps down, it's now a three-lap shootout. Rockport last weekend feature winner sitting in the catbird seat. Waiting for the stake from either Marler or Bates as they roar into turn four. 13 down, two laps remaining for the modified. Kapika and the 73 Russell Graves round out your top five. The white flag's coming up. We've got ourselves a one lap shootout with Marler and Bates. They're going side by side with one. Kapika and Gray. The battle is for the lead. Only two turns left. Bring them home. Brian Marler and David Bates side by side. The feature win to Brian Marler. Bates second. Rockport third. Kapika fourth. And Russell Graves comes home fifth.
A little bit warm in there? Yeah, it's getting pretty warm tonight. Well, we're going to send you somewhere that'll cure your appetite. How about Ashley Mays? All right, sounds good to me. Let you get them gloves off. Oh, you made a move I never see you make very often. You know what Calamity Corner's like, very treacherous. You normally don't go off that little runway back there, and uh, Taylor and Bates were up there. Did you see an opening at that time? Yeah, there was, seemed like there was 60 foot of track up there until I got there, and we run out of room real quick. Uh, these cars were so low to the ground, you hate to run it off the top of the track over there because you're going to drag the oil pan when you do. So I was just watching the oil pressure after that, hoping it'd stay with me. So. Normally you run real low. I noticed that uh, one and two usually your higher groove, three and four is lower. But you were giving David wide open inside track down there in four. You know he had to be there. Yeah, it seemed like the cars handled a little better about one about one car length up from the bottom of the track. Now it seems that's just the setup we got now. It seems to be working good. So evidently it worked tonight. Marty got you. It's been a few years since you got one of these Gatorade uh, specials, isn't it? Yeah, it's been since '89. We won it over at Bolivar in the Bomber. Started 22nd with a 22 car field, if I remember right, and uh, that's extra cash is always nice, isn't it? That's a lot of cars to pass, yeah, and I always use the extra cash. I tell you, I have to, I need to thank sponsors on this car, Northtown Collision Center, Samco Transmission, of course, Marty's Repairs, Bill's Performance, we're Bill's a power plant for this car, it's big help, and uh, B&J Auto Salvage, I'd like to thank them. Looking real good, fans, he's tonight's Gatorade Challenge winner, he took the challenge. With the win, the number 21 car out of Canterton, Brian Marler. And that means two things. Next Saturday night, he starts shotgun. And keep this in mind, Camdenton Racing fans, in about three weeks or so, the check will come from Daytona Beach. So that's when you need to hit Brian Marler up for the free dinner. He's going to get that picture taken in front of the Gatorade banner and, of course, the winner's circle here at the I-44 Speedway as well as he has picked up a couple of valuable track points on David Bates. He's got all kinds of merchandise to go with that one. And, of course, get another picture taken. The American Red Cross is on hand with us again this evening and a dollar off every admission going to the American Red Cross this evening. Oh, one of the best. Off a feature. Chris Perry will lead him out in car number 41. Tim Jackson in the number 65 car. Corky Wynn out of Lebanon, Missouri. Back on the circuit with us in car number 88. And there is your current man that is second in the track point set. Or third, I believe it is. Thank you. Carl Lawrence in car number 92. Ben Newell in the 83 machine. Lebanon's Tony Jackson at 56. There is a man that is now second in the settings, the gentle giant, J.C. Newell at 84. Mark Chance at 54. Phil Spurs, Scotty Atkinson at 22. Buffalo Sam Payne at 49. Dave Anderson, 11 at car number four. Larry Roberts, your track point leader back there at 57. Randy Nutter back with us in car number three. Ron Breast in 06. Mike Higgins in 01. Ron Dupro in 28. And the man that will start shotgun. The winner from our earlier evening feature, the number one car of Jack Daniel. And Bob, real quick, top five in those point standings. Ronnie, top five in the point standings. Well, the top three are looking like this with Larry Roberts with 236. J.C. Newell has 234. Carl Lawrence with 228 points. You talk about the racing reverend Jack Daniel, Ronnie. He's got 204 points. Marshfield's Mark Chance with 190 heading into the feature. Don't forget, extra cash on hand this evening. Don't look past Sam Payne. Anytime there's extra money, and the late model stock on ladies' night will be running extra laps for extra cash here next Saturday night as the Grand American late models will run double features up at Speedway USA at Bolivar. He's going to let them get a little bit of speed build up. This is going to be a 25-lap shootout. The Gatorade Challenge for the late model stock just about dead as we're going to let them put a little heat inside those tires.
come back out. We'll get tonight's Gatorade Challenge. A e feature for the late model stock division back up into the starting grid formation. Very valuable points that they're kind of scattered out. Roberts, your point leader, right back there toward the rear. J.C. Newell right in the hunt in the middle. And Lawrence will be starting on that second row. These cars are based on a poor race average. Of course, if they race only once, they've got points from there. Keith Pullman will be shutting the lights off this time around. And Corky Wynn, there's a name from the heydays in car 88. We speak of the heydays, the old-timers car. Next weekend at Bolivar and Levin will be driven by Roger Chisholm. Roger Chisholm, a, tour on, a terror on the dirt track many years ago, will be in the old-timers car. The week after that, it'll be Johnny Freebie from the notorious Freebie Brothers racing team. Here we go. Corky Wynn to bring him in nice and easy. Ricky Chris Perry on his outside. Mr. Foreman says, let's go racing! And it's Chris Perry in the lane. Now watch Ben Newell. Ben Newell now making a hard charge for the number three spot. And here comes Tim Jackson on the inside. Through Calamity Corner, everybody making it through good in one lap. And it's going to be the rookie Chris Perry to set the pace. Jackson now in that number two spot. And here comes Kenneth and Ben Newell. The custom concrete sponsor Chevrolet Lovato. Ben Newell has now watched the players in the point battle. Rob Pest pulls to the inside, trying to get a little windshield time. But Jackson now dies down low. We all know we all they go through turn number one. And Tim Jackson, and there goes Newell. In a flash, the second generation driver from Dallas Carrington is right in the hunt. Win and now Carl Lawrence. We are the wheel for the number four spot. The Giants back in the number six spot. It's Jackson, Newell, Perry, Lies, and Wynn, your top five. As you look at Roberts trapped behind DJ, trying to work his way through the pack. Coming down the first play with flat number four now. Ben Newell dies coming up his first time. Now Jackson shuts that on. It's Tim Jackson looking for win number two of the 1994 season. As now Mark Sheriff and JC go at it back in the middle for position. Meanwhile up front, they're heading for lap number five. And Tim Jackson of Lebanon, Missouri, former 89 Superstar champion, sets the pace. Chris Jackson won. Ben Newell right on his bumper. And the shadow of Springfield, Chris Perry hangs on the bird. Ronan Ford wins it. Can't tell the six. Down the front switch they come. Six down, 19 remains. Will he make the run down low? Now the second generation driver goes out of high time. And Thomas in the giant now as Roberts makes a clean pass. And look up hard at the wall at turn number four. Randy Nutter in that Bill's Refrigeration Chevrolet Lola bringing out the red flag quickly. to everybody. Seems to be all right. Just a little bit dazed right now. Be in the late model stock division. All you have to do is... cash here at the I-44 Speedway. And boy, you don't need any more pressure now because you've got a great points race for the hot rods of area racing. You throw in some extra laps, you throw in some extra money, they're going to come out full force next Saturday evening. And next Friday night at Speedway USA in Tolliver, they're in the staging area now. They've got two features tonight. They've already completed one. And next Friday night at Speedway USA in Bolivar. Hans and Bill Gillum are tied for the number five position.
you look at where all these cars are that are flying for the track points championship with six laps down carl lawrence in the number four position mark chance is six the gentle giant jc newell in the number seven position larry roberts is currently being shown ninth
I was watching him and Corky Wynn go at it, wheel to wheel. It's like once Mark got by that 88 Lumina, Corky went out of Lebanon. He was able to start making forward. He was working on Chris Perry very hard, and Atkinson evidently with problems down here. Out to the checkered play. Tim Jackson, Ben Newell, Carl Lawrence, Chris Perry, and Mark Chen. And Rocky is creeping forward slowly, but Sam Payne with another strong run going at a big money race. Jackson set his pace. Remember, only about the second night out, Tim come out with that brand new car. And one of our big money sportsmen, or the model stock shows. Right up, looks good. We've got 15 down. We've got nine to go. He will be showing the lights off. He's got that green flag rolled up in his hand. And Tom J.C. Newell, who was capitalizing in the set, looks like that Sambo transmission. Oldsmobile Cutlass going backwards just a little bit. Here we go. Jackson brings up the to the field. Oh, they're bunching up. You can look at Newell and Lawrence. They're ready to make a running start. And no, oh, no, no. Yellow's going to flash. He tells the drivers, I want you single file. Nose to tail. Not going to do any passing until we drop the green down. Jackson, Newell, and Lawrence. Perry, another strong run for Seattle Springfield in that number 41 car. Chance now holding on to the number five spot. The six. Roberts, your point leader, seventh. Payne, A's running eighth. Dupron, ninth. And Trevor now holding on to tenth. That, of course, your top ten. Also, Aiken, Tony Jackson, Atkinson, and Newell all on the lead lap. So, only the number four car of David right now, one lap down. Jackson playing a little bit of a mind game with Ben Newell. He knows it's up to him to set that pace. Here they come, and Keith drops the green. A go, race time. And Lawrence, well, problems, evidently some transmission problems in the 92 car. And up, yellow's going to be coming out flashing again. Ronnie, I tell you what, luck has not been on his side over the last three weeks or so. Coming into the second late model stock feature of the evening, he was only eight points off the lead, but it looks like more problems for the 92 Chevrolet Lumina of Carl Lawrence. Carl, of course, started the year very, very fast with that new car. A lot of times, a little bit racing story, if you do bowling or any other sport, when you get a new, uh, new equipment, new bowling ball, new ball glove, bat, whatever it might be, you always go real, real quick. And, Lawrence with uh, Richard Putty on hand this evening. So give the man that is third of the track point set helping hand back to the pit area. Well, now that'll put Perry up to third. And Mark Chance is the driver they better be watching for. And that Chevrolet looks at the 54 car out of Marshfield. He still has the yellow out this time. 16 down, 9 to go. He'll be shutting the lights off this time around. And he's got that green rolled up. And Tim Jackson setting a blistering pace here. And young Ben Newell, who has been running very strong in that 83 car. Here we go now. Perry, the driver, back in third chance. Fourth quarter win. Rounds out your top five at this time. Jackson, once again, brings it nice and easy. Larry Roberts now up there into that number six spot. And this is what you would call a real break for the track point leader in car 57 out of Springfield, Missouri. Larry has yet to win a feature this year. Thank you, we broke the position for this evening of some of the point leaders that have yet to win by winning the bomber for a feature. Here they come as the green is out of track. Race in action. Jackson comes to it right to the low side. Here comes Ben Newell. Newell rocking by the wild side now as Tim Jackson continues to set the base. Newell dies to the inside. Jackson using that middle lane. And now Chance trying to make a move around Chris Perry. Newell runs high. Will the captain the chauffeur has now Chance is on the charge. Mark Chance up to the number three spot. And he's on the move quickly. Now Ben Newell is to your high groove move. He puts in number 83. It's back 
because on that last lap, and of course for the lineup, we'll go back to the last completed lap. Jack Daniels got enough to challenge Larry Roberts as they look to move their way closer and closer to the top five. Of course, those who are in the thick of a point battle, not only here, but at Speedway USA and Tolliver as well. But at the front of the pack, Tim Jackson, your race leader, with Camden's and youngster Ben Noel in the number two position. Sam Payne rounding out your top five. Next week, the late model stocks for extra laps for extra cash. It is late tonight. Ladies get half off the admission price on the grandstand couple of adjustments need to be made to the field. And of course, when you bring out the caution flag, you head to the rear of the field, that is the hood of Ron Dupas machine. So take a look at the way the battle is shaking up. In a battle for sixth and seventh, it's Larry Richard, Jack Daniel. Ronnie, they're also vying for the track championships, both at Bolivar and here at the I-44 Speedway. They're bumper to bumper. That's right, of course, the line for the draw for reason for that yellow coming out. He'll drop to the very end of the field. We've got a five-lap shootout left. With Ted Jack setting your pace as the field now will go around him. Ben Newell is right there behind him. I'm just kind of wondering if Ben's playing a little bit of a cat and mouse game right now. Getting back in that second place position. To make Jack use those tires up and my chance here are the last five or six laps taking his time makes the pass when he's got a speed pass and Sam Payne is now rounding out your top five and the man perhaps the biggest payday of his career last night over at Bolivar looking to maybe pick up some extra dollars here this evening Jack brings it in nice and easy at the five slam he's first to gear him up on the start the green is out we're back to a race Jackson a little bit high in the 
corner that James does the same. Rocketing down the either wild side into the parking. Two to the left corner. Chance making a last ditch run, but the checker fly will win for Jim Jackson. Chance second, new up there, plane four. Taking the safety, your harness is off on and the helmet drop the window net as well. Extra cash coming from Daytona Beach tonight. Final side, a feature winner. Bring them on, out, fans in winter circles. High four speed. Here comes Tim Jackson. Woo! They weren't letting you rest out there, were they, Tim? Not yet tonight. Uh, we talk a little, looks like you got a little uh, fender bender back in there. You asked me under that ring, is it rough the tire? The car was really working good for you. When you got up there, did that maybe help the car a little bit? Because in the corners, you got more stable. Well, not really. I just knew what the car would do after a few laps. Yeah, had it too tight in the, in the feature. It wouldn't turn at all. Yeah, was able to leave the gas down. It turned perfect for this last one. Look good. Ben Newell was right there, but I don't know. He a little bit, and Chance was coming, but not enough laps. You knew you was all so gone, didn't you? Yeah, catching one thing and getting around another. Another thing. Let's talk about Tim Jackson real quick. What do you do for a living? I uh, frame. A lot of the racers, yeah, this is no joke. He's one of the best frame straighteners in Lebanon, if not the yeah. A lot of the racers bring their cars to you, don't they? Yeah, they know that I, I know a little bit about what I'm doing. A little bit. Let's talk about those sponsors. They're very valuable, and the people in the pit. You know, uh, Jim Co. Engineering, Steve Farner Motor Sales, uh, DNS Auto, Lane's Auto Sales, uh, e Home Improvement. And I want to say thanks to Williams and uh, another guy, Michael. Of course, the guys down at Richmond. They gave me an ignition system tonight that, that made the motor run right. Made it look real good. And, of course, that Gatorade money always looks good when it's in the mail, doesn't it? It sure does. We've been fighting some things since we rolled it over. And uh, we got our, we'll be all right. Looking good, fans. Tonight's late model stock feature winner. He took the Gatorade Challenge Car 65, Tim Jackson. And here comes that picture taken in front of the Gatorade banner. The extra cash coming about three or four weeks or so from a good friend down in Daytona Beach. Ronnie, they are set to run extra laps for extra cash next Saturday night with once again a huge points battle. How much you need to put to work? Go ahead and hold the corner of that banner. Of course, on hand with us this evening representing the American Red Cross and the police vehicle, Stephen Murray and Debbie Templeton, who's getting the picture taken with tonight's late model stock feature winner. He'll head back to the tech shed. Sure. John O'Neill will lead about a car number 26. That, of course, Greg Robertson back with us out of California with 3 and 0 2. Mike Montag in the 73 car. Doug Clyde at 10. Paul Walsh, who did a lot of work, looks like a modified now. It cars 13. Kitties, Chris Dickinson will be driving the Event Eichelman car this evening in car number 70. Coach Schultz. Three, Colt 3, Archie Griffin at 11, the Rich Liberal and Bob Webster at 25, Rash Roy Chisholm in car 57, Brian Daniel at 52, Tim Carriage at 14, Steve Allison at 23, Joe Walsh at 99, Steve Simmons back with us out of Springfield, Missouri in car number 19, Paul Walsh, another member of the Gateway Connection in car 29, and starting shotgun. He is looking for yet another Winston Racing Series Regional Championship. He'll start dead last and score 75, Larry Club. Just about set to go 30 times around. The Bob Squad will be pulling out for next. O'Neill, who has really been strong for the last couple of years, and Greg Robertson, who took a weekend off last weekend, which is raceway hard to watch the Bush series. And we're going to let him put a little bit of heat in. The Hoosier race on that ball stick.
Hoffman will get them all settled down. Top five in the late model points and is going into the nice action. Of course, Phillips for point leader going in. It's this evening. Griffin running in the point standing. Webster and Dickinson are right up there in the hot of it all. Robertson, Mon 
and he'll follow California Missouri Spring Robinson to the pit. Wallen ranked in the top 10 in the Pacific Coast region point standing with eight laps down, 22 laps remaining. And that will move the three-time national champion and Pacific Coast regional points later up to the number two spot. And Ronnie, last night at Speedway USA, John O'Neill and Larry Phillips had another great duel at the front of the pack. Here's that battle again. Life to be shutting off at the tough break. Oh, Bill Wallen. He was ranked seventh in the region. Ended up with a top five last night for Speedway USA and Oliver. And it comes Wallen back out now in the number 13 machine. A little extra horsepower getting the handle on that Camaro number 26 car. He's now got the Pacific Coast Regional Leader Phillips glued to his bumper. Eight down, 22 to go. And boy, Roy Chisholm has been coming on strong in the middle of the pack. Rapid Roy in that ball timber number 57 car. And Brian Daniel also have been making their charge to the front. Following Phillips through the traffic here this evening. Montag right now rounds out your top five. Griffin, six, five, seven, six, and eight. Paul Lawson all the way from the back. Up to nine, then Simmons rounds out to top ten. Here they come. The green is out. We're back to race in action. Phillips just running. Odeo trying to shut the door. Meanwhile, Brian Daniel trying to keep Larry Phillips in his sight. O'Neill shuts the door down. Linda 
Linda Fone, come to the tower, please. Linda Fone, please come to the tower. As we approach the halfway point with 12 down, we'll take control of that Brian Daniel now. We're ready with two wins, one at Bolivar and one at Lebanon. Right there in the number two spot. Will this be the night for the relay mile driver? O'Neill back in third, fifth and fourth. And Chisholm holds on to that top five finish. Here they come. Larry brings them in nice and easy. And the green sound will back to race in action. Chisholm down to the inside. Archie shuts it over. As Phillips rockets down by the wild side. Down to the within striking distance. O'Neill hangs on to that number three spot. As Griffin and O'Neill slide at over 100 miles an hour. Down, down, 23 down, seven 
Here comes winner Larry Phillips. Starting dead last and coming to the a big set of light models, test feature, test feature for you. Pretty good feel, it seems like it's having a lot of problems getting into each other and so forth. And must be a full moon or something tonight. Let's talk about Labor Day weekend. Johnson Service Center is going to bring that Artville Challenge Series back, and uh, you're going to be trying to become the first two-time Artville winner here at the Speedway. Yeah, I think we're a little better prepared for that Artville race this, uh, this time than it was the last time. And, Started working a little bit better, and I'm, I'm really anxious to do that. And then we're going on the next night uh, to Lakeside and run the Art Guild thing. Ought to be, of course, by then we'll pretty well have wrapped up the Winston Racing Series. You can concentrate on that big 100-lapper, but uh, that's going to be a tough field just to make in time trial. That's true. I got to end up on the end of that and starting dead last. It's not good for And, of course, extra Gatorade money again tonight, and you're appreciated from that. That's a great deal with NASCAR, isn't it? It certainly is. We're lucky to have these programs that support us like this. The sponsors like my own sportsman pick up cover, Gatorade, and Winston, and all these people. Uh, we're just going to be racing without it. Appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's another win for the Pacific Coast Regional Leader in that number 75 car out of Springfield, Larry Phillips. Well, his number one concern, and rightly so, is the car as he'll get that Gatorade get the picture taken in front of the Gatorade banner and of course head back to the tech shed and then prepare for twin late model features next Friday evening at Speedway USA and they are in the staging area our final feature of the evening boy they've already run one tonight they're getting set to run another oh yeah as Debbie Templeton from the American Red Cross also gets her picture taken with a three-time national champion. Got to be the best part of the evening. <laughs> Speedway USA's track points later, Jeff Richardson, Column High Groove in 97. George Huey Jr., 41, Rick Barker in five. Robert Reeves in car six, and evidently Closter can now run that 15 machine with a brand new motor in it, so that's Mike McMullen piloting the 28. Jesse Hawkins in 06, Teresa Holiday in 18. Linda Craig's car, Randall Weddle in 32, Rick Oliver in 12. John Colton in 94. Bobby Hammer the second in car 90. Don Scroggins in 03. Howard Shoemate in the 51 machine. Terry will be piloting that 66 machine this evening instead of Grays. Willie Compton in 0-4 and starting shotgun. And starting shotgun. 
Prescott, he won the first feature. As the lights go off, your track points later in car 11, Spanky Week. 15 takes the round for the bomb squad. Benson and Woods. And Keith Foreman says, let's go racing. Jason Woods falls out of the gate. He'll take your lane, dialing into turn one with Benson in the number two position. But here comes Jasper. Leo Jasper up to the number two position. Woods, Jasper, Wood, Benson, and Yarborough, your five. With one lap down on the Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard. The Gatorade Challenge 15 for the Bomb Squad. And Yarborough moves the number one machine. Headed off of turn two. Wood, Jasper, and Pruitt. And Yarborough will fire that machine up. Or will they? No, the caution comes out. Down. 14 remaining, and after the racing competition, fans, we need to head down to the pits and visit with the drivers. And of course, a lot of the drivers have individual souvenirs that they'd be happy to pass out to you, and some for sale as well. But I tell you what, Andrew must have done a heck of a job because he was involved in a major accident during the first feature this evening. And Cleo Jasper back not in rush, but in the number two position as we get the second bomb squad feature underway. Well, I'd like to be involved in this conversation as Al Yar, the cause of the caution, will head to the rear of the field. also stops to have a word with the track officials. So it's Woods 1, Jasper 2, Brooks 3, Benson and Reed your top 5. features at Speedway USA in the late model stocks with a great points battle. We'll be running extra laps for extra cash here at the I-44 Speedway. You want to make your plans to get here early. It is also ladies' night. Ladies get in for half price on the grandstand side. Just a couple of changes needs to be made to the field, and we should have ourselves a pretty good lineup for the bomb squad with Woods, who led early during the first feature, but eventually fell out of the top three with the lead with the lap down on the Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard. So it's Woods, Jasper, Pruitt, Benson, and Ruiz, held by McMullen and Barker. And Terry Holtkamp in that 66 machine, normally in car two, which has got some problems. Then Gary Klosner, Teresa Holliday, and Jesse Hawkins. And we've got ourselves a good lineup. Will we get the lights off this time around? Yes, they are. Wood, Jasper, Pruitt, Benson, and Reeves, your top five. That's low, methodic. Hourglass, sundial, pace of the bomb squad into Calamity Corner. Keith Foreman, president of the Shaughnessy's Ice Cream Fan Club, what do you say? Let's go racing! Woods, Jasper, and Pruitt, and Reeves moved by Benson and quickly up to the number four spot. And Barker challenges McMullen on the inside. The battle, though, is for the lead. Woods and Jasper, Pruitt sitting in the shotgun position. Looking in from third. No, oh, and Benson loops that 23, and Barker had to slide out of the way along with McMullen and Cluster to get by. But down the back stretch. It's Jason Woods, Jasper, and Pruitt. Woods, Jasper. 
for Fort Reeves, Dally the inside. As is Gerald Warren Thompson about to be put down a lap. Look at that battle for the number three position as Reeves gets by foot. Now looking to make his way by Jasper as Thompson goes up down a lap. Wolf headed off a turn four. We'll have four laps down on the Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard. Foster appears to be slowing a bit in car 15, but he is still running fifth. And all kinds of fluid from Jasper's 93 machine. No, make that four laps down officially on the Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard. And Jasper got out of the way as quickly as he could. Woods one, Reeves two. Pruitt running in the number three position. Tonight's the Gatorade Circle of Champions is a program that recognizes the winners and champions to everyone in NASCAR's 10 touring divisions, as well as the NASCAR Winston the Racing Series. You put all that together, over $300,000 will be awarded through the Gatorade Circle of Champions program this year alone. As a caution, will come back on. Jesse Hawkins has made it back out in that 0-6. your top five runners. Only three cars are currently being shown down a lap at this time. As the field will go through that quick dry, not an awful lot of it to work through. Four to 11 remaining. Hope you can join us for Ozarks Racing Roundup this coming Friday, 5.35 on Regional Radio. We'll talk a lot of late model stock driving and points battles both at Speedway USA and here at the I-44 Speedway are really starting to heat up. With about four or five racing weekends left, including the big Art Go Show. And the caution light remains on. We'll take the field through that quick drive one more time. After the races, if you want to head over to Big Daddy's Family Restaurant, exit 127 off I-44 in Lebanon. Shoot, not only after the races, but during the week as well, a great lunch buffet at Big Daddy's Family Restaurant. And the lights go off. Keith Foreman will put that powerful right arm in the air. It's an 11-lap shootout the Gatorade Challenge. Keith to the bomb squad. And leader Jason Woods, what do you say? Let's go racing! And Reed not wasting any time trying to challenge Woods on the inside as the field makes its way off turn two. Bruno Foster locked up in a duel for third. Benson sitting in fifth. Parker and Flint clear. Spanky Weezer sixth and seventh. Woods heads off for turn four. Well, five laps down. A third of the way through the bomb squad second. Main event of the evening. down. As Wood heads off a turn four, Reeves, Flosser, Pruitt, and Benton, your top five, but Barker and Spanky Weeks are on the move. Wood dialing the back stretch in that 92, but Reeves again looking to the inside, trying to move forward at the track point, standing in and out of Calamity Corner, Reeves and Wood. Side by side down the front stretch in a battle for the lead. And Robert Reeves, your new race leader. Woods right on the bumper. Washner, Pruitt, and Spanky, your top five runners. Look at that 
battle for third with Pruitt. Dialing inside and now Cluster slamming the door shut. We'll have eight laps down, better than halfway through tonight. Second main event for Bob. And Cluster with some problems. Spanky slides by and Cluster to the high side, well off the pace. Parker and Benson also go by. It's Reeves with nine laps down and Cluster also to the pace now. Boy, a tough break for Gary Cluster in that 15 machine as Spanky Weeks sliding by Pruitt and moving up to the number three position. Rick Larker rounds out your top five as Robert Reeves is 10 down, five laps remaining on the Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard. Randall Weddle in car 32 will be the next lap machine about half a straight away ahead of the race leader, Robert Reeves. Woods and Spanky, your top three, followed by Pruitt and Rick Parker. 11 laps are now in the books in the Gatorade Challenge 15 with four laps remaining and Reeves trying to smoke those tires in the number six machine. Woods, Spanky and Pruitt all trying to haul in a driver who's looking to move closer and closer to the top spot of the track. Point standings as Weddle. That's a nice job of getting a hold of that 32 machine as he goes down a lap. So it's Reeves one, then the lap car of Weddle and Woods and Spanky side by side for second. Weeze the track points later up to the number two spot. Now all he has to do is get by the lap car, Brando Weddle, and then try to haul in the race later. We've got 13 down, only two laps remaining on the Ozark Coca-Cola scoreboard. And oh, Weddle playing heaven for Spanky as Spanky and Woods get by that lap car. But the white flag is coming out this time around for Robert Green. To victory, he's only got one more lap to go. As Green heads off of turn two. Green's in a calamity corner for the final time. And all the lap car pumps will come into play as Green looks to take the checkered flag. It's coming out for Robert Green. Weiss comes on second, Woods in the number three position. Well, he will pick up some ground on your track points list. Boy, it gets tougher and tougher out there with the Bombers, doesn't it? Yes, it does. First of all, what happened to you in the first feature? Uh, I blew a radiator hose and uh, started leaking some oil, and we kind of took some parts off Chris Schumacher's car to put back on mine, so I really appreciate it. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have made it back. That was a tough wreck of that first feature over here on Get Ready Challenge Night, because you were having a chance to close in on Spanky. You're still within striking distance about a month ago, but uh, still a lot of ground to go. Yeah, it seems like every time we make something up, it something happens, and, and uh, just... That didn't go our way. Didn't go your way, but of course this bomber division, let's talk about Robert Reeves. What do you do for a living? I work at Coke. Okay, you uh, official soft drink here at the Speedway, so you know that product real, real well. You didn't start there very long ago, did you? No, just this week. <laughs> just this week, a new job. Let's talk about those people that help you. You mentioned Chris Shoemaker and his crew, but who else helped you? Uh, Northside Machine Works, uh, Young Signs, Champion Exterminator, Thrifty Discount Furniture, and uh, TJ Zantrant. My dad, I steal all of his tools. So, uh, Chris Shoemaker, he, he's the pal. He's the one that got the extra money for you here tonight, and I'll give you that steak dinner from Ashley Mays. Tell everybody just how good that is. It's good. How to go. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's Gatorade Challenge with for the Bob Squad Division from Lebanon, Missouri, the number six car of Robert Reed. And, of course, Ronnie, next Friday, twin. Late model features at Speedway USA. Ladies' night next Saturday here at the I-44 Speedway. Ladies on the grandstand side will get in for half price. The late model stocks locked in one of the tightest points battles in years will be running extra laps for extra cash with the gates opening at 5.30 racing starting at 7.30.